This is Friday, the 26th of February. This will be the last day we will work on Lesson 22. Now, the last thing we talked about yesterday was the Scopes Monkey Trial. And this brought out the difference between modern America and traditional America. During World War I, Congress had passed the Volstead Act. Now, the Volstead Act said that you could not buy, you could not sell, you could not make alcohol. This is what we sometimes refer to as prohibition. Now, originally the Volstead Act was passed to save wheat and corn. But after the war was over, they continued with the Volstead Act because they believed if we got rid of alcohol, we would not have alcoholics. Now, Americans still drank. The people who supplied the alcohol were criminals. In many cases, these people were called bootleggers. They were called bootleggers because originally you would take a flask of alcohol and tuck it into your boot and then walk into an establishment and drink your alcohol in the open. Now, probably the greatest bootlegger in the United States was Al Capone. Al Capone was more than just a seller of alcohol. Al Capone ran an organized gang that killed people. Al Capone is going to or try to organize and run the city of Chicago. This here is a brief biography of Al Capone. By 1932, prohibition was so badly being enforced and the economy was in such bad shape that Congress passed the 21st Amendment. This repeals prohibition. Now, today, it is up to the states to determine how alcohol is to be served. None of the states of the United States prohibit alcohol, although several counties in several of the states still do. The criminal element that had been born because of prohibition will simply go from one vice to another. Today we refer to a lot of these groups as members of the Mafia because they tended to be in the Italian-American gangs. Lawlessness in the city is also going to be seen in rural areas. This is a march by the Ku Klux Klan down Pennsylvania Avenue. You can see the capital of the United States in the background. And it is to show Americans that the Ku Klux Klan is for America and taking the country away from the immigrants. The Klan is going to preach a return to American values. Well, what exactly are American values? Well, you have to be white, you have to be Anglo-Saxon from the English part of Europe, and you have to be Protestant. Now, if you are not one of these three, then you are not part of the Klan, and if you ain't part of the Klan, then the Klan's against you. The Klan is thoroughly corrupt, and by the end of the 1920s, the Klan is just a shell of itself. This video here is going to talk about the Klan, particularly in the state of Indiana, which had the greatest number of Klan members. In the 1920s, to relieve stress, many Americans are going to participate in fads. Now, this young man here is a flagpole sitter. He has climbed to the top of a flagpole. He has constructed a small piece of wood to sit on, and he's going to sit on that flagpole until he's the last guy. Other people might do goldfish swallowing. Other people might say, let's see how many people we can crowd into this Model T. There were lots of fads. This particular video is going to talk about the fads. But there were also great contests. One of the greatest contests was who could fly from New York to Paris nonstop. Charles Lindbergh, who is from Minnesota, but flew the mail from St. Louis to Chicago, is going to persuade a group of St. Louis bankers to buy him this airplane. He's going to then take this airplane and take off from Teddy Roosevelt Field 
in New York, and 26 hours later, he's going to land at Le Barger in Paris, France. This video here talks about the struggles of this flyer. In the 1920s, we have a great deal of different attitudes from our authors. Now, most of these authors had gone to Europe to fight in World War I. When they returned to the United States, they were disillusioned with America. They felt that America had missed what had been proven in the war. They did not want to go back to old-fashioned values, and they wrote about it in their books. Now, this is Ernest Hemingway. Ernest Hemingway is the most prolific of all the writers. He wrote the most books. Hemingway's first book is called Farewell to Arms. This deals with the crisis in Spain that is going on. Hemingway is going to reject American values. He's going to say that America is thoroughly corrupt and we are betraying our youth. Probably the writer that you've heard of before is F. Scott Fitzgerald. F. Scott Fitzgerald is going to write The Great Gatsby. The Great Gatsby is a story about a World War I veteran who comes back to America. He is thoroughly corrupt, and it is seen through the eyes of one of his friends. Here's a video about F. Scott Fitzgerald. The last guy we're going to put in our notes is Sinclair Lewis. Sinclair Lewis is a playwright. In other words, he writes plays. Sinclair Lewis is going to write Main Street, which many people still uh, portray in their plays. Main Street is about middle class values and how narrow and confining they are. I won't spoil the ending for you, but it is a pretty decent play. Well, we have finished this lesson, and now it's time for us to do our walkout worksheet. My plan is to use Tuesday as a day to honor an American veteran who is approaching his 100th birthday and use Wednesday, that would be Wednesday the 1 to 3rd of March, as Quiz 11. So if you are not in school on Wednesday the 3rd of March, make sure that your parents contact me so we can set up some type of an arrangement for you to take the quiz.